Welcome to this lesson on the lovely old hymn, He Who Would Valiant Be, sometimes known as To Be A Pilgrim. We're going to learn it on this DG Melodeon. I'm using my Dino Buffetti today, it's a two voice instrument. So it's a, a bit louder, it's a bit heavier, but the one good thing about it is it, obviously the bellows are a bit bigger, so I don't have to worry too much about the bellows closing up uh, so much as I do on my Castanari Lily that I often use for these lessons. Uh, this hymn was originally uh, based on words by John Bunyan, who you may recall wrote Pilgrim's Progress back in the 17th century. The original words were adapted slightly in the early part of the 20th century, and the tune that we generally sing, which is called Monk's Gate, is an old folk tune that was uh, developed and arranged by uh, Ralph Vaughan Williams. So it's a very stirring hymn, one of my absolute favourites. Uh, and we're going to play it in the key of G major, so that means that everything on the G row will have the normal heads, anything on the D row will have diamond heads with my music. 4-4 uh, four, four time signature, so counting in fours in each bar. The first bar is a complete bar, not a pickup bar. A lot of these tunes start with a, an incomplete pickup bar, don't they? But this one doesn't. It's got a complete um, bar of four beats to start the tune, and like I say, G major, so all your Fs are sharp. Now I've set my metronome to 140 beats per minute. That sounds like this. So it's fairly brisk. And that's the kind of tempo we're going to uh, work with. So the first bar, it says pause minus one uh, above the bar. And that means to say that you are in this position. Now, unlike my Castanari Lily, this instrument is a third button start. So third button down on the G row, push, gives me G, and on the D row, I get a D note. So, pause minus one is here. So the second finger is on the root note. So on this particular melodeon, it's buttons two, three, four, and five. That's the position. The first page is actually four bars played twice. Let's have a look at that first bar. So we are in pos minus one. So the first note is G, so finger two on that note. It's a dotted crotchet, so it lasts for the whole of the first beat, half of the second beat. Then you have a quaver, which is an A. Same button, just pulled out. And then we drop to the button below that. Pushing gives us B and return to the G. So that gives us Now notice the way that I sounded that second note, that A, was simply by reversing the bellows. I didn't uh, replay the note, although you can if you want. And my sign for that is a dagger underneath the note. Okay, now the left hand on that first bar is G bass, G chord twice. Now I use my little finger on the G bass and my third finger on the G chord so that I can use fingers uh, two and one on the top two buttons. Not everyone does that but that's the way I prefer to play. So our first bar sounds like this. Notice you play the G chord before you play that A quaver. So you count it one two, and three four. So mainly on the push, but one note on the pull. And the second bar sounds like this. Now obviously I'm playing it a bit slower than 140 beats per minute at the moment. That's why we're learning it. So the right hand on that second bar, it's B, finger three. If I hang on to the button and pull out, I get C. Go to the button below, push, I get D, that's little finger. And same button pulled out. I get E, so it's. Now notice there that I can play by one press of the button, but here, because it's pretty slow, I tend to replay the button. I could go like that, but it's, I think it's better to actually replay the button to get that final note, that E. Now it starts with two quavers, so it's one end. The D note is a crotchet, so that's beat two, and the E, that minimum, round open note of the stem, comes in on beat three and lasts for beats three and four. 
So one and two, three, four. The left hand on that bar is G bass, G chord again, but then come over to C bass, C chord. So G bass, G chord, C bass, C chord. So you'll play those first two quavers while you play the G bass. You'll play the D note with the G chord and you'll play the E note with the C bass and you'll hold on to it while you play the C chord. So, so the first two bars like that, beginning to come together and you can hear the tune pretty clearly I think.